So the main topic of uh, this study is to understand the causal relationship between brain oscillations, that are rhythmic fluctuations of um, brain activity, and behavior. To the same, uh, we have started to identify these oscillatory markers in um, the human brain, and those markers that are related to a certain task. We use the uh, spatial and temporal resolution of MEG to localize during the retention period of the task the brain areas that were involved in, this, uh, in the behavior and task performance, and more particularly this uh, parietal region that seemed to be uh, involved uh, and uh, showed activity in the 5 Hz range, which was both the target for anatomy and for rhythmic stimulation with TMS. In the first session, they were doing the MEG EEG recording. So by combining those two methods, we had access to the brain markers, so the oscillations, but also the network of interest, where those oscillations emerge. To define the network of interest, we used two different tasks. I can show you here. One is a simple task where participants listen to two melodies. So first melody, a silence, and second melody. And they have to say the melodies are the same or different. In the second part, the participants were stimulated uh, with uh, TMS while uh, recording the EEG as well. And this combination allowed us to explore whether the TMS really untrained brain oscillation. If we boost those oscillations, so the amplitude, and also the phase of those oscillations with the stimulation. So it was a, a manner of controlling uh, the effect of the stimulation. And here we observed that theta activity, so 5 Hertz, during the retention period, when you are manipulating information in memory, emerges more in the manipulation task in comparison to the simple task. But what was really interesting is that this theta activity predicts participants' behavioral performance, meaning that the more theta the brain is generating during this retention period, the better are the participants are doing the task. In terms of behavior, we made the link, the causal link between so the theta oscillations and behavior with the stimulation by showing that the stimulation, rhythmic or arrhythmic, did not change anything for the simple task, where you don't have to manipulate information. But for the manipulation task, the benefit in terms of performance was observed mainly for the rhythmic stimulation, and only for this one. So it makes a link between ongoing oscillations that are already present, and if we are able to untrain those oscillations, we're going to specifically boost participants' performance on a given task. Another important aspect is that the link between this untrainment and the behavior was that the better the brain was untrained, as compared to the first day, the better the behavioral benefit, the bigger was the behavioral benefit. The key insight here is not only that we can modulate memory circuits via the stimulation, but also that we are beginning to understand how that modulation works. So not only were we able to demonstrate the improvement in the capacity to retain auditory information for a few seconds, but also we saw that there were changes in the brain oscillations that accompanied that enhanced ability. So that tells us something about the underlying mechanism. It tells us something about how it is that the brain stimulation actually causes people to enhance their, their working memory capacity.